Hello everyone, my name is Dennis and I'm working for Shelly in the Nordics. In today's video, I would like to show you how you can bind two Shelly devices together without the use and need of any Wi-Fi or internet connection. So, in the past, when you had to combine, for example, a Shelly Bluetooth button with a Shelly Relay, you had to either make a script or to make a scene. By using the scene, you rely on an active internet connection as you need an active cloud connection. If you wanted to avoid any cloud connections and the need of internet connection, then you could use a script to bind these two devices together. The thing is that scripting is not that convenient for everybody. So in the latest update, for Gen 3 and Pro devices, it is actually possible to do it in a different way. We have introduced something called BT Home Components. A BT Home Component makes it possible to bind uh, new Shelly Gen 3 devices or Shelly Pro devices directly with a Bluetooth device. So with that, you don't need any Wi-Fi connection or internet connection to make this work. Uh, first, uh, before we get started, I would like to uh, quickly introduce you to the difference between the Shelly devices. Everyone is talking about uh, Shelly Gen 1 devices, uh, Gen 2 devices, Plus devices, Pro devices. What is the difference? I don't want to go too much into details, but just to clarify a bit about what I'm talking about. For this thing to work, we will need a device with at least 8 megabyte of flash it only comes in Gen 3 devices, our third generation devices, and in our Pro devices. Gen 3 devices uh, looks like this. Um, they come in different colors, of course, but the way you can, can see the difference is like this. So um, the device here with the blue terminals, screw terminals, is, is a second generation, de generation device. So these are called the plus range, plus devices. And of course you can see this is a Gen 3 device because it is written on it. Uh, but you can also see it on the screw terminals. They are black. They have also been improved. So this is the latest generation of devices and we have these in different colors and different kind of uh, versions. Uh, so they come in the Shelly 1 Gen 3, Shelly 1 PM Gen 3, Shelly i4 Gen 3 and the Shelly 0 to 10 volt PM Gen 3. I don't, I don't think I've got any, um, but very soon there will be launched many more Gen 3 devices. So, um, as said, with the Gen 3 devices, um, I forgot completely to mention the minis. The minis are also available as Gen 3 at the moment. So you can use the minis and you can use these relays here, as well as the Pro range. The Pro range is Dean Rail mountable devices. So... Um, same kind of relays, but uh, they're meant to be installed inside your electrical panel. So, as you can see now, we have different kind of relays. We have minis, we have normal size relays, and we have relays for Dean Rail. It comes in different kind of colors depending on the functionality you would like to use. So, Shelly has different colors exactly because of the need to visualize the 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 different functionalities they comes with. All right, good. So to get started with this, you need either a Gen 3 device or a Pro device. And be sure that your Gen 3 devices comes with a firmware version 1.3 or later. And the Pro devices needs at least firmware version 1.4 or later to be able to support this. Um, then you will need a Shelly Bluetooth device. And there's a quite a big range of Bluetooth devices already and the range will only grow bigger and bigger. So in this, uh, in today's session, I'll just show you uh, how to bind a simple button. And we will use this new one, uh, which has not officially been launched yet, but it has been showed by Dimitar Dimitrov, our CEO, on the latest 
uh, product launch video. So this is a blue remote device, so it has four buttons and all four buttons supports a single click, a double click and triple and a long click. It also comes in this uh, four button here. It's difficult to see on the picture, uh, but this four button fits in standard European uh, uh, wall switches. There are different adapters, so it can be installed inside Gira, Bushjäger, ABB, um, installation material, etc. Uh, now I've just installed it in the standalone uh, set and it has four buttons, which I can use to turn on, turn off different devices, groups or scenes if I want to. So you need a Bluetooth device. It could also be the, the, the Bluetooth sensor. It could be uh, the door window sensor. Uh, or whatever you would like to have as a local trigger that don't requires any uh, internet connection or Wi-Fi to work. So to do this, we are gonna gonna set up the device properly first. Uh, make sure that devices are updated and so on, and then we I will show you how to bind the devices. It's 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 very simple. Um, I will show it. Uh, I'll show how to do it on my iPad. So the thing is, you can do this from your smartphone, from your iPad, from your computer, if you want to do it like that. Um, but I'm using the iPad as I need a Bluetooth device with the Shelly BLE app to be able to update my Shelly Bluetooth device. So first thing that I'm going to do is that I want to connect uh, this Bluetooth uh, remote button to my iPad to be able to update it probably. So... Go to App Store if you have, haven't already downloaded the, uh, the the app and search for Shelly BLE Debug. And this Shelly BLE Debug app is the app that we need to be able to firmware update our device. So open this app and as you can see, I need to turn my screen now for a moment and I'm already connected to a device. I have a lot of devices nearby here, a lot of blue HT. and um, so when you press your device, you can see that the device is actually blinking. So the device that I would like to use is uh, blinking in the bottom here, the yellow blue button four. I'm pressing on the device and pressing connect. I'm pressing the device once again to connect to the device. Sometimes you need to press and hold the button for 10 seconds to be able to connect the device directly to your smartphone or tablet. Uh, after 10 seconds, I will release the button. Let's see if I count it correctly while speaking. It did, I did. And then you set up the connection. Press the OTA button here to check for all the air firmware updates. And as you can see here, there's no uh, newer firmware. I have already uh, made my update. And that's what you need as of now. Now you have updated your device and now you can go ahead and connect it to your um, to your Shelly device. To be able to connect it to your Shelly device, we need, of course, to install a Shelly device, and I've already done this. So if I change my screen here, you will be able to see in the back, I have a spotlight, which is connected directly to this Shelly 1PM Generation 3 Mini. And... Um, I've already set up the device in the app, but you don't need to do that. And that's a very important fact because sometimes you have a customer uh, or you maybe just want to make a standalone solution without connecting to the app and everything like that. So um, that's what I'm going to show here, how you can connect to the device even without, even without connecting it to the app. So forget about the fact that I've already done this because you don't need to do it. I have activated the access point of the device, which is the standard feature when you install it the first time. So when you install, have installed your device at the first time, it will generate its own access point. And if you go to your Wi-Fi settings, you will be able to see that I have already um, uh, some, some wireless active networks here. And one of them is actually this Shelly 1PM Mini G Gen 3. So what, I got, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to connect to the Shelly's Wi-Fi network to be able to access it directly. Then from here, I'll open up a browser 
and I've already done this in before, but I'll open a new browser and from here I will go to the IP address called 192.168.33.1 and, and hit enter. Now I'm live directly connected to the device uh, built-in web server. And as you can see here, uh, from this browser window, I'm now able to turn on and turn off the device without the device being connected to the internet at all. It just I'm just connected directly. The next thing I want you to do is actually to check if you are on the latest firmware. So from here, you go to settings, go to firmware, and here you have to make sure if it's a pro device that you are at least on firmware version 1.4, you can see it right here. Um, but this is a Gen 3 device, and for a Gen 3 device, you need to be on firmware 1.3 or later. And I am on 1.3.2, meaning that this should actually work. If you are not con on, on, on a new enough firmware, you need first to connect your device to Wi-Fi and update it. And you can do that by going to settings, going to Wi-Fi settings, and then you can search for uh, nearby networks. Connect your device to a network by selecting the network that you want to use and enter your password for the Wi-Fi. After that, you go to settings again and you go to cloud settings. You have to enable the cloud settings to be able to find the latest firmware. When you have enabled the cloud settings, you are able to download the latest firmware. You can download the firmware and when you're done, you can basically go back and turn off the Wi-Fi. I'll just do that so you can see that I am doing this without even Wi-Fi connected to the device. So now the device is completely offline, but I'm still connected to its local access point, meaning that this uh, CLA device is still uh, making its own Wi-Fi access point that I'm connected directly to. Good. Now we have updated our Shelly devices, both the Bluetooth device and also the Wi-Fi device, meaning now, now we are ready to connect directly to the devices. So go to the tab called Components here, and from the Components tab, you can find this BT Home Components uh, section. Press on the plus icon here, and then it tells you to uh, press and hold the Shelly Blue device for at least 15 seconds to enable discovery mode. So I'll, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna press the device and hold it for around about 15 seconds. And now my device is starting to blink blue, meaning that it is in a pairing mode. And you can see that it popped up right here. So um, I'm gonna press configure here on the device. And now we are in the configuration section. From here, um, you can give it a name. I will call this blue button four. No, sorry, this is a blue remote like that. Um, I've given it a name now, and now I need to define what sensors I would like to include, uh, what I would like to, what kind of sensors I would like to use. So you can see that the supported sensors for this device is battery status. It is button zero, button one, button two, button three. So instead of calling it button zero, I would rather call it button one. The thing is that Shelly always starts from zero, also when it comes to the relay. So if it's a two channel relay, they're called relay zero and relay one, um, but I prefer to start with one. So I will add this first button here by pressing the plus icon. Come on. Uh, one sec, I need to update my browser window, I guess. Yeah, uh, I'll just give it a name again, call it uh, blue remote and then pressing the button here. Yeah, now it worked. Um, from here, I can rename it. So I will call this button one, save settings. I will add another button, edit it, and call it button two, save settings. I can also add the third button, 
0.3 and let's add the last and fourth button I'm only going to show you one but uh, uh, but still just to show you how you can do it now uh, I have actually binded my devices together it will still not work if I press the button because we have not defined how it should work uh, but we can do that now by going to the actions tab up here so it's just like creating a normal action I go to the actions tab and from here I can create an action uh, from here I can select uh, what component that should trigger uh, the light source so you can see here I have the input and the output of the shell relay itself but I also have my new buttons which I connected here so I'm gonna press the button one so I want my button one to uh, be a trigger and to control my light source give it a name it could be turn on it could be turn off I will call it toggle relay active time is just should just uh, I will just leave it as it is to make it active all the time and here you can define the event condition and the event condition can be a, a value change a state change but also you can see a push button button double push triple push long push uh, double long push etc etc let's just go with a button push meaning every time I'm pressing a single time on this button I would like to turn on or off the light then do section here uh, I could add a URL and trigger another uh, URL like an HTTP command if I want to do that but in this case I will just make a local action uh, here I can control the output like turn it on turn it off uh, but I would like to change this to toggle the output and that's it safe action and safe action that's basically how uh, it works and and how you have to set this up uh, so now I've set up my uh, first button here to trigger my lights up there so let's just try and see if it's working so I press the button and it turns on the light if I press the button again it turns off the light so it's very simple to do and as you maybe saw before I have disconnected this device completely from the Wi-Fi so this is working even without being connected to connected to any Wi-Fi network or the internet it just works extremely fast and it works 100% locally so now I can actually take this relay with me and this button with me to my customer install it without the need for setting up anything on their Wi-Fi network or the app it will just work standalone and as I said you can do this uh, by using the Shelly motion sensor the Shelly door window sensor if you want to um, even the Shelly uh, blue HNT so you could for example use this to trigger uh, a relay to control the bathroom fan when the, the when the humidity gets too high um, so there's a lot of use cases which is very simple to do in this this way here and yeah I, I think it's very convenient and uh, I really like how, how, how this works so I hope you understood the point and how it's working and um, See you in the future, guys. Have a nice day.